Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. Hey friendo, Steve here. And Larson. So with the WWE draft having come and gone, and with the charred remains of anyone's hopes that SmackDown becoming a real competitor Raw anytime soon, still fresh, we figure we take a look at the best and worst picks each brand made. Yesterday we dropped a video giving you the best WWE draft picks, so today, of course, we give you our picks for the worst picks in the WWE brand draft. Mojo Raleigh! Okay, okay, I know I harped on this in the Going In Raw podcast, but there were six NXT roster spots available for the GMs to pick from. And instead of choosing a day with Tommy, Shinsuke Nakamura, or NXT champion Samoa Joe, SmackDown chose Mojo Raleigh? But if any of those names you mentioned were drafted, there'd be a huge hole in the NXT brand. Look, I agree with you, but that doesn't explain why they weren't drafted according to storyline. All they needed was to let the WWE Universe know that NXT GM William Regal was allowed to protect X number of wrestlers on his roster. We didn't even have to know who that would have been. That could add to the mystery. Just that there was a reason certain big names weren't taken. Yeah, if I'm Raw or SmackDown GM, I really don't give a shit about the health of NXT. I just want the best names on my show. Some explanation, even in a throwaway manner, would have been nice. I know! Look, Mojo seems like a nice enough guy. Hopefully he and Zack Ryder can do their hype bros thing on the blue brand. Maybe Ryder can be both SmackDown Tag Team Champ and SmackDown US Champ if he takes it off Rusev at Battleground. My guess is none of that will happen for him. Oh god, no. None of that's gonna happen at all. No. He's gonna... Well, in about five years, he'll get another big... Like main event win on Raw, perhaps. Like an underdog win. And then, and then have to go back to NXT for some reason. <laughs> exactly. Finn Balor! I love doing this, Larson. Putting a name on the best list and then swerving you all and adding him to the worst list as well. But it should be said that this is largely a Larson decision. Correct! I understand the rationale behind Finn going as high as number five. is to emphasize his arrival on main as a huge deal. But as we've seen with other NXT call-ups, success in the developmental brand, even to the level that Finn experienced, doesn't automatically translate to success in the major leagues. And considering the other talent taken way further down, like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, hell, even John Cena was taken number seven, it's a bit surprising Raw would gamble such a high pick on a completely unproven on main commodity. On the other hand, you get two personas with Finn, the Demon Finn, which I don't really like, and Fonzie Finn, hey. which I like slightly better. Yeah. So you get two picks for the price of one, that's actually good value. Hey. Baron Corbin! It's surprising that such a dominant force in nature like Baron Corbin would be taken so low at the 18 spot. Why Raw or SmackDown didn't take him with the number one or number two pick is beyond me. It's a terrible, terrible What? Yeah. No, Corbin's on this list because look at who was taken after him. Enzo and Cass, the club, Cesaro. Hell, even the number one contender for the IC title, Darren Young, was taken way below him at number 36. Why was Corbin taken above all these vastly superior acts? Oh, that's, that's not at all why I was cool with Corbin being on this list. I figured maybe his draft pick number of 18 was simply symbolic of the number of world titles he's going to rack up over the course of his amazing career. It's maybe the number of hairs he has left on the top of his head. Whoa, whoa, dude, we are not supposed to be talking shit about balding people. I don't know what you're talking about. This is all, it's all going away very quickly. Oh, I got a full head of hair, kind of. Charlotte! Okay, so while it's wise to stockpile championships, exactly why Raw took the current women's champion Charlotte over, say, the New Day, the tag champions, which we chose as a best value pick in our best draft picks video, it's all beyond us. We're not saying Charlotte isn't a world-class champion. We both think she's great. Oh yeah. Just that taking her at the number three spot when other talents like AJ Styles, John Cena, Sasha Banks, and Jack Swagger... Mm are available is very odd. Can you believe Jack Swagger wasn't taken till number 40? Talk about a best value pick. We're still curious as to how they're going to handle the women's division going forward. Yeah. Will there continue to be just one women's title? Will both brands have a belt? There's still so much that's unknown about life in the post-brand split era. Just please, please don't bring back the Divas title. You said in the other video you won the Divas title back. I know, I swerved everybody in this video. So which one is your actual opinion? Exactly. The club! Okay, so let me get this straight. The best heel faction in the WWE right now. The guys who are red hot thanks to their assertion that their sole goal in life is to beat up John Cena. They're being broken up? 
AJ Styles was drafted in SmackDown at the number 4 spot, so it was natural to assume the club would follow suit and continue their feud with Cena, but instead they got drafted to Raw. Granted, Finn Balor, the founder and former leader of the Bullet Club, was drafted to Raw as well, and we're hoping that leads to a reunion and more stories involving AJ down the line, but we don't really have faith that the WWE is going to turn Finn heel the way they did AJ, or even have him go tweener. We imagine they'll just be used as fodder for Finn to run through on his way to a boring babyface run, but we usually prepare for the worst, so we're pleasantly surprised when cool shit happens. That's the biggest lesson we've learned being fans of the WWE like 20 years now. That and John Cena always wins. That's true, that's, yeah, that's the other one. Yeah. The Miz! Look, to a certain extent, I really appreciate what The Miz can do. He's a decent worker, a pretty good talker, but he shouldn't ever, ever be anywhere near a title belt. I'm guessing he was chosen 17th simply because he has the IC title over his shoulder, not so much for what he can actually bring to SmackDown. Which is minimal. Mm. What we're trying to say is that he's a horrible value pick, especially with far more dynamic and interesting wrestlers like Kevin Owens, Enzo and Cass, and American Alpha went after him. Even the number one contender to his IC title, Make Darren Young Great Again, wasn't chosen until number 36. This is probably another example of Vince really loving a guy while well, everyone else thinks he's mediocre. Yeah. Like, imagine Vince talking to Triple H. Well, Paul, I think we should put the IC belt on Mike for at least a year. Uh, Dad, who's Mike? Who's Mike who? The Miz. Oh, Mike. Oh, yeah. No, he's terrible. What are you talking about? Natalia! We both really, really like Natty, and she's been doing fantastic work ever since she was inserted into a feud with Charlotte earlier this year. But now that she's out of the title scene and rumors have started floating around that she may hang up her boots in the near future, I'm not sure how much sense it makes for SmackDown to draft her ahead of, say, Paige or Naomi. It's definitely a pick for the short term, especially with Natty and Becky Lynch currently embroiled in a heated feud. Maybe Natalya went full Kmart mom on Shane and Daniel Bryan and browbeat them into picking her in the top 30. See, I've got these coupons here. Can I get your manager? I, don't, I want to be drafted in the top 30. I've got coupons right here. Who's your manager? He just goes to Daniel Bryan and he says, I'm general manager. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler! Look, we love Dolph Ziggler circa 2012 or so, when he was a legit contender to the big gold belt. We knew that no matter who he wrestled, it'd be a stellar match, and he sold like no one else on the roster. Remember when HBK wrestled Hulk Hogan and oversold everything to a cartoonish degree? Yeah. That's Dolph Ziggler in every match, except he does it as sincerely as possible. And for a short while, he was booked as an underdog face who just wouldn't give up, no matter how beat down he was. That particular gimmick kicked off during his only world title defense in which a heel Ziggler lost to Alberto Del Rio and turned face in the process. From that point on, fans were behind him, but sadly management wasn't, probably due to all his concussions. He never obtained a world title again. Since then, he's been stuck in sort of a jobber to the stars limbo, picking up wins here and there against bigger names and young talent, but never threatening anything larger. So being taken above talents like Neville and Cesaro is beyond us. Maybe he's due for a career resurgence on the blue brand, Larson. Kevin Nash recently told Vince Russo that he'd like to come back and manage Ziggler like he did with HBK. Confirmed here, Diesel drafted the SmackDown. Oh, his knees gave out. Aww. Maybe it was his quad. And then on the podcast, Vince Russo said, Hulk Hogan, you piece of shit! Brock Lesnar! First off, the jury is still out on Brock in several ways. Granted, his now tainted victory over Fat Mark Hunt at UFC 200 probably means any desire he has to make a full-on return to MMA has done crashed and burned. Yeah, if you take that out of the equation, picking a part-timer like Brock with the eighth pick is ridiculously high. Sure, the Beast Incarnate's still a huge draw for the five to eight shows he actually attends every year, but if his WrestleMania bout with Dean Ambrose is any indication, we might be entering a new era of Lesnar sleepwalking his way through the remainder of his contract. And if Dave Meltzer is right and Lesnar was actually supposed to be drafted first overall, if not for his failed drug test, that simply indicates the WWE has to be cooling on him, or at least preparing for diminished returns on their pricey part-timer. Maybe after his fight sports days are over, he could finally open up a couple Jimmy John franchises in Suplex City. If his shorts are any indication, he's a huge mark for their sandwiches. Jimmy John's, the only way to feed the beast. Is that supposed to be Paul Heyman? Uh, uh, Paul Heyman and Joey Styles are like the same, like, I can't, I can't the, the delineate between the two. <laughs> The Big Show! Well, here it is, the worst value pick of the draft. Larson, look, we like The Big Show, we like Paul White, but even by his own admission, in his appearance on the Stone Cold Podcast, he's a utility player now. The guy the company points to and says, hey, you gotta get this young guy over. 
So why the big show would be chosen over names like Neville, Cesaro, Page, Titus O'Neil? Hell, even Demon Cage had been picked over Big Show. He literally chokeslammed Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn right to hell during the draft show. Why the hell wasn't Corporate Kane drafted? He seemed a lot to be a top 10 pick. Because not only are you getting a future Hall of Famer, you're getting a seasoned executive who can also handle all your insurance needs. And looking at his insurance company's Facebook page, he seems to be an able chef at company barbecues as well. Of course, he was raising the fires of hell, Larson. Well, that's where he learned to be a great pit master. <laughs> In the pits of hell, he becomes the pit master. He wants some pits of hell smoked pork shoulder, <laughs> brisket, ribs. And he just sticks to hot dogs, man. Oh, okay. He, just, he keeps it simple. Hot links. Hot links, there you go. Anyways, those are the worst picks we could think of. If you guys have any difference of opinion, let us know in our comments, of course. Yes, please. And of course, we have the video for the best draft picks also on our channel right now. You guys can click out and check that out right now. Yes, please. <laughs> That's all you're gonna say? Both episodes are best value. <laughs> they really are for us.